What's up guys? Thanks for coming back to check out another video. I really appreciate you stopping by. So this is the second video of two about how I make and mix my drums. If you haven't seen the first one, I recommend you check it out. I'll put it up here somewhere. In this one, I'm gonna go through how I mix my drums. Just a quick disclaimer before we go into it. I do things very by ear and I do things how I like them. It's not necessarily how you should do them. And it's probably not what an engineer would tell you to do, a mixing engineer. In fact, I bet a lot of these techniques are probably technically wrong, but I like the way they sound, so I just, I do them anyway, to be honest. So I hope you can take something away from this video, and yeah, just enjoy the content, guys. Have a good day. So guys, in the previous video, I went over how I make the drums, and let's just take a quick listen now to that. So yeah, that's what we made in the previous video. Now I'm just going to do a quick mix of the drums to get them sounding a bit more knocking and popping. So to be completely honest with you guys, I don't do too much mixing to the drums. You know, the samples I use have already been compressed and driven. So what I do is mainly just to tighten things up a bit and make it sound a bit more uniform. So the first thing I do is add a glue compressor. So let's go get one of those. And what the glue compressor is basically going to do is just even things out slightly. You know, not too much. High attack, low release, and I'm just going to listen until it sounds a bit more even. Compression reduces the volume, the overall volume, so I'm just going to turn the makeup gain up slightly. And now we'll AB it. I AB with my eyes closed just so I don't really know which one's which and I can tell which one sounds better. So let's go. So the way I mix is very ear based. So now I'm going to add a compressor and while the glue compressor was to make things more uniform, I compress now with the compressor in more of a creative way to get a bit more slap out of the drums. So let's check that out. Yes, it mainly affects the kick of the snare. Okay, and that sounds pretty good to me. Another good one you can use is the drum bus. The drum bus, I think it's a sort of compressor um, with various frequency ranges you can mess with. And yeah, it just makes things generally sound a bit bigger and a bit more poppy. I'm not gonna use it in this case because I think the two compressors are already doing quite a good job. In the previous video, I already lowered the volume of the hat sample to minus 12 dB here. Uh, I'm gonna just turn it down a little bit more because the compressor kind of put that back up. So I'm gonna go here into device. And I'll do the same with the open hat. Okay, so now that the whole drum track is a bit more uniform, I go in and alter a bit each individual one shot. So I'm gonna go to the snare first. So this particular snare sample already hits quite hard, but if you wanna make the transient, the very start a bit more slappy so it hit, cut, cuts through the mix a bit better, you can do this technique. So take a compressor, put the ratio to maximum, threshold to minus infinity, 
attack down, release down and take the makeup gain off. And obviously now you won't hear any snare sample because it's getting completely compressed. Turn the attack up until you can only hear the very start. And turn the release up so that you cut off even more of the tail. So now that we're only hearing the start of the snare, we can start to bring in the rest of it slowly. So just turn in the threshold up. ratio down. So as I said in this sample I'm going to take that off because I already think the snare sounds pretty good as it is. But yeah that's a good technique you can incorporate into your drums. So what I like to do to the snare though is add a bit of reverb. So I'll just take the standard Ableton reverb for now and I'll put the dry wet to about 7%. Quality to high and low cut that. I feel like too much reverb on a snare can make it sound a bit 80s, like 80s disco type stuff. So just be careful with that. You still want it to sound dry and punchy. So now that I have that, I'll copy that reverb and put it on my hats. Copy that again and put it on my open hat. So on my open hi hat, I actually like to have a delay, so I'm gonna put that in there. Just make sure that's only on the open hi hat. And I like to have it going in quarters, so put that there. and you get that kind of offbeat effect. So I'll ping pong that. Now on the kick, I like to add a transient master, which is a plugin from Native Instruments. And basically what it does is more or less the same thing that I showed you that you can do in the snare so that it will pop through the mix a bit more. So let's check that out. I'm just going to solo the kick here just so you can hear it. Okay, now that we've compressed the whole drum track, we've played a bit with each sample, we're gonna get a bit more creative with it and make it sound more old school and more boom bappy or lo-fi. And what I like to do to do that is use RC20, my favorite plugin. And I think every lo-fi producer's favorite plugin. So I'll go and put that in. Here we go. What RC20 basically does, if you've not used it before, is add just more character to your sample. You know, for example, you can add vinyl noise, a wobble, it's like a warped vinyl. On my drum track, I just really like the RC20 distortion. It really warms it up. If you don't have RC20, I can highly recommend one of Ableton's stock plugins, which is called Vinyl Distortion for this uh, distortion type thing. Sounds really similar and is also really good. I used to use it all the time. So with RC20, let's just hear what that sounds like.
Another thing I like to do with RC20 is add a bit of noise between each sample so it connects the drum pattern a bit better. So yeah, I'll just increase the noise. But instead of using vinyl crackle, I quite like either the tape or the muff. The muff particularly for drums actually. But I only want the noise to sound in between each drum hit, so I'm going to increase the duck knob, which is pretty much like a sidechain compression. Okay, now that that sounds pretty vintage, I like to add a filter. And for this, I'm just gonna use the Ableton Stock Auto filter, which I think sounds really good, to be honest. And I'm gonna just take off some of the highs. Yeah, that sounds really good to me. Last thing, which isn't really drum mixing, but it makes the drums sound a lot better, is of course, side chain on the sample. So go into the sample, and I just use again, the Ableton stock compressor. Side chain, pick your drum track, and either go kick and snare, or I prefer to just go kick. So here, kick no stress. And I like this sort of visualization for sidechain. And we're gonna go heavy sidechain. And after sidechaining, I just like to put the chain a bit up. Okay guys, so actually that's it for my mixing. I keep my mix really simple. As I said, maybe the stuff I do isn't the way you're supposed to do it or the way an engineer would teach you to do it. But for me it works and I like the way it sounds. So I hope you learned something you can take away and use in your beats. If there's any plugins or techniques that you know you use to do this sort of similar stuff, hey, let me know in the comments, DM me, let's have a chat about it. You know, it's always interesting to speak to other people about their way of doing things. Hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned, subscribe, see you next time. Catch you guys.